You're listening to Native Writers Fest, a series that features Native literary talent from Minnesota and beyond. Linda Lagarde Grover is a Boys Fort Band member and an award-winning writer. She teaches at the University of Minnesota Duluth in the American Indian Studies Department. Lagarde Grover was born in Duluth and is the oldest of a large family. She knew that there was something in her family that was never talked about, and that was the boarding school experience. She said it was like a shadow over her past. Her grandparents met at the Lake Vermilion Boarding School near Tower, Minnesota, but she didn't know the full extent of that history in the United States until she started doing research on boarding schools while working at the University of Minnesota. Over time, she learned how they started off as mission schools and then became a tool to erase Native culture and identity by making children learn, quote, white people ways. She says it was a form of genocide. But the big boarding school era didn't begin until after the Civil War, when a man who had been a career army officer who had worked with Indian people and with Indian scouts, I guess you'd call them in the army, and with native prisoners, had this great idea, he thought, for a new way to deal with a big problem, which was that you know, the Indians were like breathing and stuff. And so he thought, he thought that instead of warfare and genocide, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be a, a kinder, more gentler, and more positive way to do things if native people could be schooled? And he had some success working with young male prisoners. Um, he, his wife and her friends had, um, in doing good deeds, had, had taught some, some of these young fellows to read and to write, and had really involved them in community service things, and they thought it was a very positive thing. And so Richard Kraft then, um, when, <clears throat> when he was um, finished working with Indian prisoners, um, petitioned Washington to allow him to have a big school for Native children, that he could, he, could, um, he could solve the problem by assimilating American Indian children into larger American society. And he was considered to be you know, quite the progressive for his time because he thought this, was, this is not warfare. And it really, and it wasn't, you know, but it was a different type of warfare in my opinion. He honestly felt that by assimilating American Indian children, go for the youth because they're easier and faster to teach, assimilate them into larger society by removing them from their families the way his prisoners had been removed, teaching them to read and write and do, you know, do a little, do a little uh, arithmetic and stuff like that, and um, keep them in a, what we would call an, an immersion program while they were having their schooling, that they would probably then just blend into larger American society, they would assimilate, and then all kinds of problems would be solved. Lagarde Grover said the boarding school at Lake Vermilion closed in the early 1950s, and by that time, it was just a day school. You know, it was, it was one of these things where we're touching a little part of history. You know, thinking about him as a young guy and then thinking about the years past and thinking, thinking about my grandparents who's, you know, who, who met there. My, grand, my grandmother was, um, was a good 10 years older than my grandfather. We're not exactly sure of the year of her birth. And they, um, she actually was one of the older girls who was helping out at school and he was a little boy when they first met. And it was many years later that, um, that they met again. Years ago, she started looking closer at Lake Vermilion School when she got a call from her aunt. And I thought, well, that sounds, I thought, wow, really? I didn't know that. And she said, yeah, yeah. She said, so it wasn't for that, it wasn't for that school. You can think of it this way. You wouldn't be here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the experience at the school was a really difficult one, as it was at, as it was at Indian boarding schools for many, many, many children and, and young people for a long period of time. Lagarde Grover explained that General Pratt was good at fundraising and networking and got a lot of money and support for Indian boarding schools. She went on to do more research at the National Archives and read superintendent reports that basically spelled out their policies of isolation for Indian children. All of this research influences some of the characters in her books. Writing about the experience her grandparents had at Lake Vermilion is one of the ways she remembers what they did for her to be where she is today.
For KBFT, I'm Allison Herrera. Native Writers Fest is a production of the Net Lake Radio Project and is supported by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund.